All right, let's get to a Mavericks versus Celtics mailbag heading into game two. It is Dallas Mavericks today. He's Jeffrey Cooperstein. I'm Harrison Graham. Time to flush game one uh, and move on. Obviously, we'll take any questions from thoughts about game one, but we'll also uh, get our thoughts heading into game two. So let's kick things off. From Matthew McCullough. Shout out Matthew McCullough. Do you think Kyrie can bounce back in game two? I obviously think he can, but mo more importantly, Coop, he needs to. I don't think he has to have one of these 38-point games, but – Yeah, no choice, man. He needs to be at least your second-best player in that game, you, period. You, he has done this so many times throughout the postseason, and I even predicted, like, look, in one of these two games, he's probably going to have a stinker. Unfortunately, it was game one. I really hope that he can get past it and have a good game, too. I don't know if it was the Boston crowd that impacted him. I don't know if there was something else going on uh, that impacted him, but – he was poor. He missed a couple of wide open threes that he should not have missed, plain and simple. Just a couple layups, too. A couple layups as well. And if he makes those shots, you're right in this game. I mean, he was 6 of 19 from the field, 0 of 5 from 3. Uh, I, you know, he had a couple of games in the OKC series where he had single digits. I think that was his worst game. I really yeah, think. no, I, it really was. Especially when you just factor in that third quarter stretch where it's like you're playing with house money. You, you got drilled in the first half. It's a couple threes there. It's like... You're back in the game, so um, I, I feel okay heading into game two. I, I'm not saying he's going to have 40, but I, I definitely expect him to make more shots than that he is accustomed to making. Go to RT Productions here. Do the Mavs need to set the tone more the first half so they aren't playing catch-up? I mean, yeah, look, you can't be down 17 after one. The funny thing is, is Dallas, one of our keys to, the, to victory, kudos to Coop, uh, who's working on some things behind the scenes. I'll, I'll keep uh, the show going here. He, he said weather the first five minutes. Well, the first TV timeout was with 6.58 left, and you were up 13 to 12. Like you came out and played pretty well early, and then you're down 37 to 20 after one. I mean, it, then it ballooned up to 27-point deficit the second quarter. Like, from the six-and-a-half-minute mark in the first quarter to about the three-minute mark in the second quarter – the Mavs got drilled. I don't know what the exact run was, but it was – I think I saw at one point, was it 44 to 14 or something? I mean, they got just hammered. Um, so, yeah, obviously uh, they've got to play better early. Um, we'll see if they can in game two. I mean, it's pretty simple. If you're down 20-something points in the first half, it's hard to overcome. We'll get to your questions coming up here. Hashtag Mavs or Super Chat. We got a super chat from Neil. Appreciate it. He says, yes, we lost game one versus OKC and the Clippers, but Boston has much more star power than those teams. Actually, I don't know if they have more star power, but they are a better team. There's no questions Boston's the toughest team the Mavs have faced. I, I'm going to keep my concern meter at a five. I, I'm obviously mildly concerned, but it's one game. You go win game two, you accomplish what you needed to. That, that's the bottom line. So... Um, that that's kind of where I'm at. I think Coop probably uh, feels the ga uh, the same here. Yeah, I, I I honestly do agree. Look, I mean, it it is one game, and I I know I've repeated this, but I'm doing it more so for my own sanity than you, <laughs> than you guys. They haven't lost back to back games in a long time, and I'm not sure it starts now. I really think this team is a very resilient team. Jason Kidd is such a calming presence in that locker room, and I don't think he will allow them to get too down. When they win a big game, he doesn't allow them to get too high, so I really believe they're an even kill team. They're going to come out firing in game two, man. There's really no other option. Yeah. Look, uh, if they lose game two, I'll, I'll raise it to about an 8-5, but I'm, so, I'm going to stick at a five going into game two. Let us know what your biggest concern for the Mavs is in this series early on. Got Archer Davenport here. Think Tingus Pingus should be doubled? No. He didn't make a shot in the second half. He was, yeah, the only shot he made was that dunk off the offensive rebound after he bricked a three so bad that it landed at the three-point line and Boston recovered it. The first quarter that Chris Epsporzing has had was the best quarter of basketball he has played. He blacked out. It was like that Carl Anthony Towns game four game where he just decided, uh, yeah, yeah, in game four. I'm not going to miss. It was um, incredible. And he didn't. Look, he was making them from 30 feet. He was making them off the dribble. He was curling. He Tough looked mid range. Healthy. Yeah. Uh, look, man. Sometimes you just tip your cap to you tip your cap to a guy, and you have to tip your cap to Porzingis for that first quarter. After that, he was ordinary, Harrison. Yeah, he had like, a couple more in the second quarter as well, but 
I mean, he was a non-factor in the second that, half. It, now, it, he didn't have to be, but I, I honestly, I would be floored if we saw a half anywhere close to that caliber from him the rest of the series. Me too. And this is not a I hate KP thing. It's, it's not. I just, it, it's he just, was unconscious, man. He, he looked like prime Dirk in two, circa, two, th- circa 2004 where he's just moving everywhere and completely unstoppable. I mean, dude, he put the ball in his left hand and just – Spun around lively and threw down a dunk. It's exactly. like, is he going to do that again? I, I don't know, man. Scott Hernan, he says, the Celtics defense looked pretty strong. How will the Mavs have to adjust? How are they being played by the Celtics to win? I, look, I don't know how Boston accomplished it, but the Mavericks for the final 40 minutes of this game basically went to an ISO offense. They did. Um, that's not. They obviously have two of the best ISO scores in the world, so they're going to do that some, but... Their bread and butter is Luca pick and roll with Lively and Gafford. They they have got to they have got to get back to that and have shooters ready to shoot on the wing. And it uh, yeah, I mean credit to Boston. They if I, I don't know if they found some scheme or they just made them uncomfortable or what, but they clearly did something. I mean, to... look, they can switch a lot with their wings. It, it, it the pick and rolls may not be as is uh, effective as it's been. Yeah. But you can't change. You can't go away from who you are. At this no, point. absolutely. Not. Like obviously, you have to make adjustments and find different ways. But like, if you turn into a primary ISO offense, you're not going to win this series. Boston has too many good perimeter defenders. It won't happen. Look, make the adjustment in game two and and try to find something else that works on offense. Subscribe to the channel. We have you covered throughout the playoffs and beyond. As we will dive into our offseason coverage. Hopefully not. For a while, but uh, hopefully not too this, soon. Once the series ends, we will do that. It's free. Hit that sub button. Nate. Our guy Nate. Chow, why did we look so weak on physical tonight? I don't know if I necessarily I, felt that. I thought late late first until about the four-minute mark of the seven, Boston raised their energy level, and Dallas struggled to match it. But that was the only segment of the game. I thought Dallas matched their energy early. They were active defensively. They were deflecting a bunch of balls. And they held Boston to 44 points in the second half, man. Yeah. Like, I, I, I don't think this was a physicality thing. I think they got blitzed for about a 15-minute stretch and could not overcome it. Yeah, like, That's absolutely. how I feel. Well, it, they got blitzed twice. I mean, they got blitzed in the first quarter. Then they get it down to eight. And in with I don't know the exact time, but it was less than four minutes. They were down 22. Yeah, so 14-0 they, run in, in three and a half look, minutes. You can get blitzed once in an NBA game and – Maybe sometimes you won't get away with it. You cannot get blitzed twice. And they got blitzed twice, and they ended up losing the game because of it. I believe that this team uh, will will respond well, but they got to find a way to limit the runs that the Celtics have. And I know that's a hard thing to say. The Celtics won 64 games this year. They are a great team. They are the best team in the NBA. Got to find a way to limit their runs. Yeah, and look, I mean, Boston made a lot of tough shots tonight. Give them, or on Thursday night, whenever you're watching this, give them credit. Um... If they keep making tough shots, you may not. It just may be what it is. But I'm willing to bet that Porzingis isn't going to do what he did again in that half, and that some of those contested threes aren't going to go. Stay the course, make the minor adjustments where needed, and uh, go win a basketball game on Sunday. Absolutely. A couple more here, Jay and Mac. Every three from the Mavs is ISO ball. Every three for the Celtics is yeah. Look, the it Celtics had way. 23 assists. The, the Mavericks had nine. That's that's the, that's the story, man. It tells you the story of the game they, right they there. They got they got better looks, and that was after making tough looks. Yeah. When you're making tough looks and you're still the team getting the better looks, that's that's a tough battle to overcome. The Celtics made tough shots. The Mavs missed easy shots, and that is why the Celtics have a 1-0 lead in the 2024 NBA Finals. I think it's as simple as that. I really do. There you have it. Game two on Sunday. We'll be live at 6.30 Central Time here on the channel. Tip off at 7 o'clock, probably 7.05 or so from TD Garden in Boston. They've responded all year. They've responded this playoff Go run. They again, haven't baby. lost two in a row. You went on t- Sunday, you're going to be feeling pretty good about yourself. He's Jeffrey Cooper. I'm Harrison Graham. Hit that sub button. We'll see you Sunday.